Sarah, and I know it's super late, but it is officially time for my June reading wrap up. Things got a little bit crazy at the beginning of this month, and I never really just had a chance to sit down and film this video. So even though we are over halfway through July already today, I'm here to share with you all of the books that I read in the month of June. Overall, June was a pretty average reading month. Unfortunately, I didn't quite get enough books read to make it to my halfway point goal of 50 books by the end of June. But in the month of June, I wound up reading a grand total of seven books for a combined 2,597 pages with an average of 371 pages per book book. 86% of those were new reads and 14% of them were rereads, 57% of them were standalones, and 43% of them were part of a series. When it comes to the genre breakdown, 29% of them were nonfiction, 29% of them were fantasy, 14% were literary fiction, 14% were classics, and 14% were mystery slash thriller. 57% of them were for an adult audience, 29% were for a young adult audience, and 14% were for a children or middle grade audience. In regard to the character diversity, 29% of them were nonfiction and therefore had no characters in them, 29% had no diversity represented in the characters, 14% had ethnic diversity, 14% had LGBTQIA plus diversity, and 14% had multiple kinds of diversity. When it comes to the protagonist diversity, 29% of the books again were nonfiction and did not have any characters in them, 57% of the protagonists were not diverse, and only 14% of them were. When it comes to the setting, again, 29% of them were nonfiction and did not have a setting. 29% of them took place in a fantasy realm. 14% took place in the United Kingdom. 14% took place in Canada. And 14% took place in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We had a slightly more even split with the author gender this month, and 43% of the books were written by men, and 57% were written by women. 14% of the books were published in the 1930s, 14% were published in the 2000s, 43% were published between 2010 and 2015, and 29% were published in 2016. When it comes to the star ratings, I gave one book two and a half stars, one book three stars, four books four stars, and one book four and a half stars for an average star rating of 3.71. And now let us jump into the books. Up first we have The More of Less by Joshua Becker. So Joshua Becker is the author of the blog Becoming Minimalist, which as you might guess from the title is a blog about minimalism. The More of Less is his most recent book and is the combination of all of the major things that he has learned about minimalism over the eight-ish, I think, years that he has been a minimalist. And so it starts with sort of the why behind becoming a minimalist, the practicality of how to become a minimalist, gives you ideas for experimentation and how to declutter and how to sort of start to minimize and simplify your life. He includes a lot of interviews from a lot of other prominent minimalists, and I really, really enjoyed this book. I wound up giving it four out of five stars, and I think when it comes to minimalism in general, this book is just a really great starting point. A lot of the things that he talked about as far as the actual decluttering process, I have already gone through in my own life, but it was still really neat to sort of refresh myself on why I became a minimalist in the first place and read some of the stories of the different people and how they discovered minimalism and the different ways that minimalism manifests itself in other people's lives. So I will be doing some videos in the future about the sort of intersection of being a minimalist and a bibliophile, and so I will probably talk about this book more. If you would like a full video review, let me know. But if you are interested in minimalism, I would highly recommend picking this book up. Do not read The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up. It's ridiculous. This one is way better. Up next we have Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. So in the month of June, the Tome Topple happened, and The Air of Fire was the first book that I picked up for The Tome Topple, which is the third book in the Throne of Glass series. Seeing as it's the third book, I'm not going to say a whole lot about the plot, but I will tell you guys, those of you who have been watching my Sarah J Maas Throne of Glass journey, this was by far my favorite book in the series, and I wound up giving it four out of five stars. I definitely started to enjoy Selena's character a lot more in this book as you start to see a lot more growth in her as an individual visual and I really enjoyed some of the newer characters that we get introduced to in this particular book. There are certain things about it that sort of irked me and I was not a huge fan of so I still was not like totally totally in love with the story or the characters because as I read through it I still had moments where I was just a little bit frustrated with the choices that Sarah J Maas was making for her characters and all that jazz. I will most likely be doing a full video review on this in the coming months-ish, I don't know when. To break up my tomes within the tome topple, the next book I read was Anne of Ingleside by L.M. Montgomery. This is the sixth book in the Anne of Green Gables series, and in this book we start to transition sort of from Anne 
Anne's story to the story of her kids. The last two books in the series, Rainbow Valley and Rilla of Ingleside, focus exclusively on Anne's children, and this is the book that bridges the gap for you. There's nothing mind-blowing about it per se. A lot of people don't like it as much because it focuses more on the kids than it does on Anne and Gilbert, but I still really enjoy the story. I just love the way that Ella Montgomery writes and the characters that she has created and the ways that you see the different unique personality traits of Gilbert and Anne and them as a couple manifested in their kids, and it's just a very fun addition to the series as a whole, and I wound up giving this book four out of five stars. Up next was Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas, the other book that I read for the Tome Topple. So Queen of Shadows is the most recent publication in the series, the fourth out of six books, and I was not a huge fan of it. Um, obviously with Air of Fire I had started to like a lot of the things that were happening and the characters more and stuff like that, and this one returned me to my original ratings that I had for the earlier books, which is two and a half out of five stars. Again, as with Air of Fire, I'm not really going to say anything about the plot itself because spoilers, but there were just a lot of things that Sarah J Maas did with the different characters characters in the book that I just really had major issues with. There is a relationship happening that I cannot get behind at all. It's like an OTP to the nth degree. I cannot stand it and every time they showed up on the page I wanted to just gag and I was like no 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 no. But on top of that there are just some things that she is doing with some of the characters that I really really love in the series that I just felt were completely out of place for the characters that she has created. The thing that I enjoyed most about Queen of Shadows was actually one of the things that irked me the most about Era Fire and that is the focus on the witches. I really didn't like them in Era Fire. I was not interested in their characters at all and I every time they showed up on the page I was like why are we reading about these people I do not care but they very quickly became some of my favorite people to read about in this book and is probably the only thing that saved me from giving this only like one and a half or two stars because I cared far more about what was going on with them than I did with a lot of the other characters. Up next we have Under the Harrow by Flynn Berry. This was sent to me by Penguin in exchange for an honest review and is a standalone adult mystery slash thriller novel that follows a woman named Nora who one weekend goes to Oxford to visit her sister to find that she has been brutally murdered. So the book follows Nora in the aftermath as she is grieving this sudden and violent loss, is working with the investigators, is trying to do what she can to help find the killer, and it watches Nora wrestle with a lot of different emotions from the actual just general grief of losing some someone that you dearly love to the guilt and sort of feeling that she owes it to her sister to figure out who killed her and that if she had done something differently or if she'd done this or whatever that her sister might be alive. I found the concept of the book rather intriguing but the execution was a little bit flawed for me and I wound up only giving it a three out of five stars. The writing itself was fairly solid, not bad but not amazing and the character development I did rather enjoy for most of the book. The biggest issue I had with this book was it's a mystery thriller so when you read a mystery thriller you expect it to be intriguing and thrilling and to just grab you and pull you in and I did not feel that way at all when I was reading the book. In fact, I felt myself falling out of the story where I would be reading and then stop and realize that I had no idea what was going on because I had just sort of dozed off for lack of a better term and was not paying attention to the story and that happened frequently as I was reading the book. It took me far longer than it normally would have to read a book of this length because it's barely over 200 pages and so I easily could have read that in a couple of hours but it took me four or five to actually finish it because I just kept getting distracted and not really being engaged or intrigued by the story as a whole. Up next we have The Cellist of Sarajevo by Stephen Galloway. This was my TBR jar pick for the month of July which was to read a book that is someone else's favorite and this was recommended to me by my Twitter friend Annie. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Absolutely loved it. It was my favorite book of the month. The Cellist of Sarajevo is a literary fiction novel that is based on a true event and that is during the siege of Sarajevo a cellist witnessed a bomb that killed 22 of the people that he knew and so he decided for 22 days he would sit in the spot where these people died and he would play a song for them. One day one song for every single person that died and so the book starts with the cellist observing this bombing and these deaths and then from there we follow three different characters Arrow, Dragon, and Keenan, who are all people living in Sarajevo under siege and we watch as they all go about their daily lives and eventually in some way shape or form intersecting with the cellist and hearing his story and hearing about what he's doing and this book 
it was just so beautiful. It was beautifully written. There are many quotes that I wrote down as I was reading through the story. The writing style is just absolutely lovely. The character development of Arrow and Keenan and Dragon was absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed how they each drove their individual stories. But I think the thing that I loved the most about this, in addition to just the beautiful writing and the characters, was just the story itself and the sort of look at how war changes your humanity and how different people respond to it and who you become as a result of living through these horrible situations. But also the thing that I loved the most about this is one of the biggest themes that comes through is this idea that in situations like a deadly siege where everything about your life has been completely disrupted, the idea that just going about and doing normal things and living your life as normally as you can, smiling at people, not being afraid is its own form of fighting back, is its own form of resistance. And I just, this book was exquisite. I will certainly be buying it and keeping it on my shelf and rereading it I'm sure many times in the years to come and I highly highly recommend you check it out. And my final book for the month was What We See When We Read by Peter Mendelssohn. I first heard about this book last year from Max from Well Done Books and this book is basically about the psychology of reading. The title is relatively self-explanatory and in the book Peter Mendelssohn who is an incredibly well-known book designer, he goes through and talks about the psychology of reading, how our brain processes the information that we see on a page when we read about what a character looks like or about the different settings that they're in and how those settings relate to the things that we've experienced in our lives and the people we know. He talks about time and vividness and co-creation and all sorts of different things that come into play in the reading experience that we probably have never really thought that much about before. But I really, really enjoy this book. It is a super fast read because of how it's formatted. I read it in a day on a day where I have, was at work and I was having dinner with friends so it wasn't like I had hours and hours to read the book. And so if you are a book person, which if you are watching booktube videos, chances are you are, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. I wound up giving it four out of five stars. It's just a really interesting read, very much a nerdy like, oh my gosh, you're such a book nerd kind of thing. But I think it's really fascinating to just think about what the reading process is and he has some really really interesting insights and so like I said if you are a big book person or if you just really enjoy psychology or anything like that I would highly recommend checking this one out. Well there you have it friends that is my June reading wrap up. If you have read any of these books I would love to hear your thoughts so please let me know in the comments below. If you want to follow me elsewhere online you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads all at Sarah Ann Hayes. The links for those profiles will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye! And 43% of them were for... 1% were... Not 1%, 14. 14%, not 1%. In regard to the character diversity... In... Took place in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here.